Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Look, out, look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to wish you a happy New Year. I want to wish you a happy New Year. Amen. 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 If you got a Bible this morning, turn with me to uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to get right into the word today. Hallelujah. God has something good in store for us. Also, while we're in the word today, I want you to prepare your heart and mind. Today, we are going to take communion. And this is the first Sunday of the year. We'll be doing communion every first Sunday. Uh, so please join us for a time of reflection, a time where we come before the Lord and we bear our heart open to God. Hallelujah. So that we can uh, so that we can receive from the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. And while you're turning there this morning, I want to share a word with you, a story that Jennifer has shared in the past. But I want to share it with you because it pertains to what we're going to be speaking about today. How many, of you know, how many of you know that we live still uh, on the first weekend of, uh, uh, of 2021, we still live in a very fearful time. People are uncertain of what's going to happen with the election. People are uncertain of what's going to happen with COVID. People are in fear of what's going to happen with a lot of things. And so we, in, in the face of, of fearful times, we need to be a fearful, a fearless people. Amen. We need to be fearless in the face of fear. And we need to be the kind of people and the kind of church where we are faithful to God and we are fearless when it comes to standing for the things of God. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. In a, such a fearful time, we need a fearless church. In such a fearful time, we need a fearless people of God. Hallelujah. In such a fearful time, we need people who will stand on the word of God and no matter what is happening around us, will stand and proclaim the truth of God's word. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 We've got to be the the kind of people who are fanning the flames of ministry, fanning the flames of the Holy Spirit, fanning the flames of all the things that God has for us because the devil's job is to make sure he quenches the spirit. He wants to do anything he can to throw water on anything you got going on. Come on, somebody. Anything good that's happening, he wants to throw water on it. Anything good that's happening in your life, he wants to undercut it. Hallelujah. And so you and I have to understand that God is asking us to stand, amen, for the things of God, to stand in the power of God, to stand on the word of God, and to do the things that God said to do. Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The story goes like this. There's a man who was a, a believer and he dies. And when he gets to the pearly gates, St. Peter meets him at the gates. And he says, oh yeah, come on in, we've been expecting you. And so the guy walks through the gate and as Peter is walking him, he's walking him to the throne room of God. He says, come on, we're gonna go meet the Lord Jesus Christ right now. He is so anxious to meet you. He has been waiting for you all this time. He can't wait to look at your beautiful face. And so the man is walking down the hallway with Peter. Amen. Once they get past the pearly gates. And as they're walking down the walkway, he notices these great big buildings on the side or uh, to one side. It looks like an industrial complex. Amen. And as they're walking through this walkway and they're, they're walking through this industrial complex, the man asks St. Peter, he says, can I just ask you a question? He says, what's all this industrial stuff going on? These look like warehouses down in the commercial district. He goes, oh, don't worry about that. Those, are, those You don't have to worry about that. Uh, that doesn't belong to, that doesn't pertain to you. And he goes, well, I just want to know what it is. And he says, okay, let me tell you exactly what it is. He says, those warehouses are full of the blessings that God wanted to give to his people. Right. Come on, somebody, listen. Right. Those warehouses are full of the blessings that God wanted to give to his people. But his people failed to possess the blessings that God had for them. Amen. We need to be a church that takes possession of the promise. That takes possession of the things that God has for us. Let me tell you that the children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years. Listen to me carefully. Yeah. The children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years. And the whole time that they wandered, Moses was telling them the same thing for, the, the, for 40 years. He says, we have a land that is our possession. Yeah. It's called the promised land. Yeah, yeah. It's a land flowing with milk and, honey. milk and honey. Amen. The grapevines are so big, it takes two people with a stick in between them to carry the grapes. In other words, the blessing and the provision and everything is so big in the land of promise. Amen. That is yours and you can have it. 
But when are we going to get it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The promises of God are yours. And in him, they are yes and amen. Come on, church. But we've got to be the kind of church, amen, that is a fearless church where we will take action and take faith yeah. to go get the thing that God has for us. Let the church yeah. say amen to that. Yeah. And we have become, listen, we have become complacent saying that we are Christians but never possessing the promises of God. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Jesus, yeah. reach, hallelujah. Yeah. Woo, I feel a preach coming on. Watch out, somebody, watch out. <laughs> amen. We have become complacent calling ourselves believers but then never possessing the promised land. Conve uh, uh, complacent to have nothing. Complacent to be in lack. Complacent to be in poverty. Complacent to be uh, 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 stuck in mediocrity. When God has called you to be a peculiar people. God has called you to be rich in his blessing. Hallelujah. God has called you to be blessed above all the nations of the earth. Let the church say amen. 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 Ooh, watch this. America is called, oh, come on somebody, America is called the land of the free and the home of the, of the brave. But Leonard Ravenhill said this, he says, if we are called the land of the free, I wonder what we are free from. Certainly we're not free from sin. Certainly we're not free from fear. Certainly we're not free from sorrow. But perhaps we're a country that is free from the fear of God. Oh, Jesus. Forgive us, Lord. My mind. Forgive us. Forgive Woo. us. My mind. You remember when your children were young and they messed up in school? They talked back to your mom. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, and the, the dad would come home from work. She would say, wait till your father gets home. <laughs> He's going to put the fear of right into that booty come on somebody say amen he ain't playing no games with you amen and you ain't playing no games with me come on somebody and i wonder in 2021 church in this new time in this new season in this new era that we're walking into while we're still in the grace period while we're still under the dispensation of god's grace are we really in fear of what god is going to do are we really expecting the Lord to come at any time? Are we really doing God's business and getting out there, sharing the gospel with people, telling them that the Lord is, is almost here, amen? Yeah, telling yeah. them that God is going to come, get your life right, or yeah, get left. Yeah, come on, yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. got to be the kind of believers who stand on the word of God. Let the church say amen. 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 Woo, woo, woo. As we talk about uh, Ephesians chapter 4 today, this is powerful. Because Ephesians was a jacked up church just like this one. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had messed up people. People who struggled with addiction. People who struggled with a lot of things. Amen. But here's what was happening. Is everyone in the Ephesian church was saying the right things, but not doing the right things. They were a church that was full of religion, but they were lacking in action. But we are a love in action church. Right. We are the church, amen, who gets busy doing the things of God. I don't read from the King James Version. I don't read from the New King James. I don't read from the New Living Translation. I don't read from the NIV. Come on, somebody. I don't meet, read the, from the Bereans Bible. Come on. I read from the Doer's Version of the Bible. Right, right, right. And the Doer's Version is the one that you read and you do what it says. Let the church say amen. amen. We got to be doers of the kingdom of God, right. doers of the word of God. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. We cannot be the church that is full of religion, but is lacking in action. That's right. That's right. We need to be the church that's known for having the love of Jesus. People in our community, in our homes, wherever we are, need to know, man, that church just knows how to love people. That's right. They're not perfect. But they're perfectly imperfect. That's right. yes. Amen. They don't love all the way, but they love real good in the meantime. Come on, somebody amen. say amen. 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 We can't be the kind of church, listen to me. We can't be the kind of church in 2021 that we were in 2020. Amen. Where we invite right. visitors to come, but they see everybody arguing, so they leave. Oh, come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. This happened to churches all over the country. Where people get invited, but there's so much stuff going on within the church body, it's no good. Why would they want to be a Christian if they followed your example? We used to say in the old church, Amen, that if you were if you were found uh, if you were charged, 
in a court of law with being a Christian would they have enough evidence to convict you? That's right. Ooh, that's right. Come on, Help somebody. Say amen to that. Help us, Pastor. We've got to be a church of loving believers, but it only happens if we love each other. Amen. How can you display something outside the church if you don't display it in the church? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Amen. How can you love people and witness to people and share with people outside, but you can't love your brother who's that's sitting right. next to you that's in the right. church? That's right. Woo! Preach, Pastor John. Today is 2021. Amen. I got a message for you out of Ephesians chapter 4. Let's turn there right now. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor right in the eye and I say, neighbor, neighbor. your confession your will be your possession. Be your when your confession, when your confession has, corresponding action. has corresponding action. Come on, look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. or neighbor, or neighbor. Your confession, your confession will be your possession, be your possession. when your confession, when your confession has, corresponding action. has corresponding action. We had a good Bible study. We had a good Bible study in, uh, in uh, Lake Tahoe. And we talked about how faith is the mindset that expects God to act. Faith is the mindset that that expects God to act. When you speak something, amen, you expect God to do something. But in order for God to do something, you've got to speak something, then do something yourself. That's right. You have to have a corresponding action. There must be action on your part, amen, so that God will do his part. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Amen. We must first do what we can do so that when we have done what we can do, God will bless us to do what we can't do. Right. Well, let me say that again. <laughs> we must first do what we can do if we expect God to bless us to do what we can't do. Ah, right. oh, come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Amen. That's powerful. That's powerful. When you realize, listen, that it's not just speaking the word of faith, it's walking out your faith yes. that's important. Yes. Yes. But nowhere in the world in 2021, is it more important than doing it right here in the church? That's right. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you, neighbor. I love you, neighbor. Amen. Look at the neighbor on the other side and say, I love you, neighbor. I love you, neighbor. Now listen, now listen. Now you can't just say it. Now you've got to prove it. Uh, my wife told me when we were dating. Teach us. Teach us, Pastor. My wife told me when we were, when we were dating. She would say. Stop telling all my secrets. She said. <laughs> <laughs> she would tell me, look. I was not saved. She, she, she would tell me, she would call me, look, brown sugar. <laughs> got a girlfriend? She says, you got a girlfriend? I said, no. She says, you do now, sucker. <laughs> she goes, I'm going to put it on you. Oh, But watch this, but watch this. But later while we were dating, she says, look, don't just tell me you love me. You can say that all you want, but the proof is in the pudding. Don't just tell me you love me. Show me you love me because that's the real proof that you really love me. That's exactly what we're going to read today in Ephesians chapter four, proving that you love the people here first before you can love anyone else out there. Let the church say amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord. Thank you for your word today. Be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, everyone says. Amen. amen. All right, here we go. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you believers, you people in Bread and Water Ministries, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Put your hand on your heart right here and say, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. Amen. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and be gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Let me read verse number two again, because here's where we have trouble. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Let me just tell you what humility means. Humility is what God has called us to do, the lowliness or the, the, the humility, the humbleness of walking with the Lord. 
Humility is not thinking less of yourself. That's right. But humility is thinking of yourself less. Come on, somebody. Listen to me carefully. We live in the me first generation, me two generation, me three generation. I want my iPhone. I want my iPad. I want my i this, my i that. We live in the me generation. But God is saying, listen, humbleness and humility is not putting yourself first all the time. But humbleness and humility is not thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less and allowing God to be first in your life. Amen. Amen. Be patient. Be humble. Be completely gentle, Paul says. Watch this. This is powerful. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Unity in the spirit. Look what he says. Number one, he says, live a life worthy of the calling you have received, the individual. Amen. Then he says, keep the unity of the spirit, corporate. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Ooh. So it starts with the individual, but it affects everybody corporately. Let the church say amen. amen. Verse number three, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body. One spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all, through all and in all. Let the church say amen. 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 Yeah, that means this. Listen, listen. He calls you individually with a great calling. He calls you individually with a great calling. That calling is not just for you. That body is for the, that calling is for the corporate body. Yeah. But once we all are together in the spirit of unity, then we are all one in him. Right. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one church, one spirit of God at work through everybody here. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, this is good. This is good. Verse number seven. But to each one of us, Grace has been given as Christ has given it to us. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. Verse 9. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? Oh my God. What does that mean for you and me? How can you ascend with Christ? Amen. Unless you first lay down some things. Oh, some of us might have to lay down some pride so that we can ascend with God. Some of us might have to lay down some anger so that we can ascend with God. Some of us might have to lay down some sinfulness that we haven't broken up with so we can ascend with God. You've got to lay some things down. Oh, come on. I say it like this most times. Listen, if you want to have a breakthrough in your life, sometimes you might have to break up with some wrong people, some wrong places, some wrong things in your life so that God can lift you up in due time. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to sometimes lay some things down before you can go up with Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. This is powerful. Verse 9. What does he ascended mean? except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions first. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher in all the heavens in order to fill up the whole universe. It was him after he ascended that gave some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be apostles, some to be pastors, some to be teachers. Why? To prepare God's people for works of service. That's Let the right. church say amen. amen. Let me just tell you, if you have uh, graced this pulpit, if you have been one who's been up here preaching and teaching and loving the people, come on somebody, then God has raised you to be a teacher, a pastor, a prophet, an apostle, evangelist, whatever it is. Why? So that you can help equip the people of God. Your job is to help equip each other. Come on, somebody. Amen. The pastor teaches, you get equipped, and then you take what, what you've been equipped with out to the world. The church that's gathered together on Sunday should be church that's scattered on Monday. The church that's gathered for service on Sunday should be the church that's scattered for service on Monday. Oh, come on, somebody. Say amen to that. That's powerful. Watch this. Watch this. Verse number 13. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God 
and become a mature, a mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Yeah, so the teaching is to make you mature in Christ. The teaching is to make you a, a, an adult Christian, not a baby Christian. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 13. He says, when I was a child, come on, I thought like a child. Come on, I acted like a child. How about this one? I reacted like a child. Oh, yeah, we don't miss, we miss that one sometimes. Listen, when I was a child, I acted like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Uh, you know that you don't ever have to teach a child what belongs to him. Because what's the first uh, word he learns? The devil puts it right in his ear when he's a baby. He says, mine. Mine. He takes the toy away from the other kid. Mine. Right? When I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. I talked like a child. I responded like a child. He says, but when I became a man, hallelujah, I had to put away childish things. Let the church say amen. 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 Look, at the, look at your neighbor to the side and say, neighbor. 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 Or neighbor, it's time to grow up. Now look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Come on, somebody. Say <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get the ministry team to come and prepare the, uh, the, the communion? Hallelujah. Yeah, some of us are big kids. Some of us are big kids. Amen. All right, come on. Here we go. Verse number 14. Now when we become mature in Christ, <laughs> now when we become a, 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 a grown-up in Christ, then we will no longer be infants in Christ, tossed back and forth by the waves of our emotions, tossed back and forth by the things that we're hurt by, and blown here and there by every wind of a uh, famous teacher who's on TV, come on somebody, and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming, Verse number 15, but instead we would speak the truth in love. Amen. We will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Jesus. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part of the body does its own work. Right. Let me just tell you that this body that you have, it has a million cells working together so that your body will function the way it functions. You have a liver, you have a spleen, you have a stomach, you have a brain, you have a heart. All these are parts of the body that need us to function. And here's what happens. This is what Paul is saying, that you and I need each other to function properly in the body of Christ. But we have a lot of Christians who are spiritual, uh, have a spiritual pride. Come on, somebody, listen to this. We have a lot of Christians who are full of pride. There's no humility in some of the lives of the believers. They are full of pride, and they have pride in everything. They have pride of race, pride of place, pride of face, and pride in God's grace. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, Let somebody. me say it to you one more time. Listen to this. There are some believers who are still immature in Christ, come on, that have the pride of race, the pride of place, the pride of face, and the pride in God's grace. What does that mean, Pastor John? I am so happy that you asked me. <laughs> Jennifer and I have been pastoring for the last four months up in Lake Tahoe, California. There's a lot of people there with a lot of, uh, let's say, resources. Come on, somebody. They got some resources there. And I have met some people already that have been Christians for a long time. Amen. Who... Uh, who are still immature Christians. Uh, there is a prevailing thought there that if you're not white and Republican, come on somebody, if you're not white and Republican, that you are seem to be less than uh, than the other people who are white and Republican. That's the pride of race. Watch this. How about this? How about the pride of place? They know that they're in an affluent area and when I told them that I pastor a church in Riverside, they all walked away from me. They're like, oh. <laughs> so you got the pride of knowing that you live in a nice place and you've got some resources and uh, you're very well taken care of and you look real good. Come on, somebody. So you have the pride of race and the pride of place. And then what about the pride of face? 
when your haircut is perfect and your sparkling tea you smile and your two sparkles come on somebody amen you look good and you look right and if you don't have these certain kind of harley davidson boots on then you don't belong in this crowd come on somebody you you mean you got a pastor who's got buck teeth and brown skin and he wears a harley davidson t-shirt when he preaches oh no that's that's not for us we don't we don't go for that around here amen so they even, so you have the pride of race, the pride of place, and the pride of face. And now you have, they even have a pride in getting saved by God's grace. Well, I am saved. I didn't have to work for my salvation. It was the grace of God that saved me. But they're very pious when they say that. Come on, somebody say, has anyone ever met anyone like that? The pride of race, the pride of place, the pride of face, and the pride in God's grace. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. But that is a immature, that is a immature view of what God is doing. You and I, as mature believers, must understand, amen, that God is doing miracles in our life, that God wants to use us in a powerful way, that this is a powerful church in the name of God. Let everybody say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to ask you, I want to ask you, what is the position that you are in now? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings with every spiritual blessing. But if you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing, have we taken possession of those blessings? Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Watch this, verse number 17. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live in the old way of thinking. No longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Oh, don't let sin deceive you, church. Listen, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, amen, don't let anyone have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Let the church say amen to that. That is powerful. Watch it. You were taught, verse 22, with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, the young, immature self, the old, sinful self, the one who's corrupt self, come on somebody, that one who never did anything right self, the one who never believed anything good self, the one who have never spoke a good word to anybody self, put off your old self which has been corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Raise your hand and say, Lord, Lord I'm ready to be righteous. Lord, I'm ready to be holy. Lord, I'm ready to do things your way, not my way. Come on, lift, lift the left hand now and say, Lord, I swear I'm ready to follow you. Lord, I'm ready to do things your way. Let the church say amen to that. Therefore, verse 25, each of you must put off falsehood, put off lying. Why? What does lying do? Lying undermines anything good in the church. Put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Joshua and the book of Ephesians go hand in hand. The book of Joshua was this. The underlying word for the book of Joshua, possession, possession, go in and possess the land. That's what the Lord told them. He led the nation of Israel after 40 years in the desert in to possess the land. Now, here's what you and I have to understand. You and I have to overcome and occupy, overcome and occupy, taking possessions of the promises of God. I want to ask you a question. Does your conduct match your confession? Yep. Come on. Preach, Pastor John. Watch this. Does your conduct match your confession? <laughs> or is there a conflict which is causing a contradiction? Mm -hmm. Let me say it one more time. Does your conduct match your confession? Or is there a conflict in your life somewhere which is causing a contradiction? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to say something to you. I want to say something to you, church. A child of God cannot confess a sin and then persist in living in that sin. Let me say it one more time. Let me say it in English this time so everyone can hear. Listen, 
<laughs> a child of God cannot confess a sin and then persist in living in that same sin. That is a dead giveaway that that person is not a real child of God. That is a dead giveaway that that person is not a real child of God. That's why this is what Paul says here. Do not let Verse 25, verse 29, here it is. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Amen. But only what is helpful for building others up yeah. according to their needs. That it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, to whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all your rage. Get rid of all your anger. Get rid of all your brawling and slander. Get rid of all, every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God has forgiven you. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go. Like a growing tree, like a growing tree, a Christian should be developing courage, then knowledge, then self-control, then endurance. Yes. Let me say it one more time. Just like a growing tree, you Christians are growing in the Lord. Listen to me carefully. Just as a growing tree, a Christian should be developing courage, then knowledge, then self-control, and then endurance to do what yeah. God has called him to do. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready to receive communion today? Yes. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a good word today. Amen. Uh, look and say it out loud. I'm ready to be faithful, ready to be faithful and, fearless. and fearless. I'm ready to be faithful, ready to be faithful and fearless. And fearless. Yeah. You guys, if you please, when I was reading through my list, I forgot to mention Christine. That's Vicky, Vicky's mom. Everybody knows Christine, Paula, Paula, and Johnny's mom. And there, please keep her in prayer. She's still in the hospital. Okay, they still have her at Kaiser, but she's safe and she's healing. Amen. So please continue to keep her in prayer as well. Hallelujah! Let's just come before the Lord and open with prayer as we prepare to receive our communion today. Father, we thank you, Lord God.